Hello everybody and welcome to another video of IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad with Bismarck. Today we are going to bomb an airfield, but before that let me just show you what happens if you spawn in a little bit too close to the front lines. Right there, our AA is opening fire. This is a captured airfield, as you can see there by from the lag that's been worked on. But this P-2 has spotted us. And even though ground fire gives him something to think about, his bombs hit their mark. So yeah, not the best start to the day, but let's not have that stop us and take off at a different one. So here we go, once again in my Stuka, closing the canopy here and preparing ourselves for takeoff. Just in the, on the right hand side there you can see somebody already who has taken off, that's also a Stuka, I think this guy is actually... Uh, carrying two 3.7 centimeter gun pods. Let, let's just prep our plane for takeoff here. Make sure that the uh, the radiators are properly set. Pitch has to be up a bit. And then we are good to go. Aligning ourselves a bit more here with the runway and let's just go and take off here. I'm loading, or I'm carrying, that's probably a better word for it to say, describe it. I'm carrying a 250 kilogram bomb and four 70 kilogram bombs. So it's basically the standard loadout you can carry. So go a bit lighter by omitting the 70 kilo bombs and just carrying the 250. Or you can go uh, really heavy with uh, two 250 kilogram bombs and one 500. Or if you really, really, really want something to be destroyed, uh, you can always go for the 1,800 kilogram bomb, although I haven't tried that yet, and I'm quite worried of how you take off with that thing, but uh, it must be must be possible somehow, but probably you need the full length of the runway and then something. Anyway, we're quite far away from the front lines here, I don't have to worry too much about friendly, uh, or enemy fighters, so more to say. Um, although, what worries me at this point is more that I don't blow my engine. Now I haven't flown the Stuka all that much. Mostly it's been very short sorties, maybe 15 minutes or so. And um, I haven't really gotten a feel for for the proper engine management just yet, but I think it's fine. My settings should be more or less fine. We're probably not getting as much out of the engine as I could, but I'd rather fly, uh, fly a little bit safe here. Just to be sure that everything is uh, going to keep together until we actually get to the front lines. Now this is a very interesting server in fact. Um, we are playing on the normal Stalingrad map but this server has already custom missions so to say implemented in it. Um, the Germans and the Russians are of course fighting over control over Stalingrad. However you can also capture airfields. Um, the Germans, for example, with their Heinkel 111 can land at airfields that have been uh, destroyed or strafed or already attacked by ground forces and then they can capture these. As well as that, the Germans have a very limited number of planes available to them. However, they can stock up on extra reserve aircraft with every Heinkel 111 that lands at a friendly airbase. Um, so it basically gives a little bit of a reason for, for you to fly a bomber. It's just simply from, one, from the supply base to the, the frontline airfields. That way you can give your 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 team a couple of new fighters to fight with. You have the, the F4, of course, 109 F4, G2, and then 190A3. And with every supply drop, so to say, um, actually you, you kind of land there, so it's not really a supply drop. But yeah, with every time you land there, the effort gets stuck up on, on aircraft. Now as well as that, of course, this server is one of the biggest ones available at the moment. It holds up to 60 players. Uh, it's located in the US. Oh, there we have a friendly. And it's located in the US and we have... Actually, I didn't experience too much of, uh, of a prop wash there from the other plane. Maybe I'm not quite sure if that's been implemented yet. Anyway, uh, before I uh, go on to talk about turbulences and all that stuff. Um, yeah, the, the, this server holds 60 players 
and it's mostly when it's uh, prime time for the US it's mostly getting to to its maximum uh, load the uh, games are quite nice once you have 30 uh, people in there and of course after that uh, 40 50 60 it gets really really nice uh, although you will often find yourselves being uh, alone um, you know you start fighting against uh, an enemy aircraft and suddenly another enemy aircraft joins then another enemy aircraft joins and suddenly it's a uh, free on one the only thing you can do really do is run away you can't really stick around and fight and just you just have to hope that somebody sees you from your own team and helps you what i also have to say is that when the server population is low i've experienced it uh, quite a few times that hardly anybody wants to fly the russians everybody's in their f4s everybody's in their g2s and a3s and the Russians have maybe have five players against ten or even more. I guess that has something to do with, um, well, you know, new new players will probably uh, go for for the German aircraft simply because they're considered to be more powerful. And at the same time, maybe there's also more fan following for these German aircrafts, um, just in a sense that in the West maybe we. Some people don't want to fly Russian. I don't know if that really is true. Um, I pref I like both. I uh, quite like flying uh, with Russian aircraft as well. But yeah, that is an observation that I had. And it's uh, at those times when when you really have below twenty players and so on, it often has very asymmetrical teams, and that is not all that fun. Uh, especially because every aircraft you see, you can more or less. Um, bet on it that it's actually a friendly one if you're flying on the German side so there's a lot of guesswork and uh, if you do happen to spot an enemy aircraft it often happens to be already uh, hammered by quite a few allies so that's not all that nice now we're gonna fast forward a little bit here uh, since the flight time is actually quite long I think it's gonna take me another roughly 10 minutes to actually get to the airfield um, so once I'm get there, well, we'll resume with the commentary and oops, we actually have company. One second guys, I just have to check if this is German. That's German, yes. And uh, that is also German, okay. So two B of 109s escorting us here, that's good. Let's just hope that it stays like this as well, that these guys don't disappear. Maybe they're actually uh, really escorting me. Maybe if they've seen me and they've said, uh, let's escort a Stuka, that would be nice. Um, but yeah guys, let's just uh, I'll just continue flying here and fast forward a little bit to the action. So with closing in on the enemy airfield, it should be here somewhere. I'm not a hundred percent sure where it should be, but judging by the map that I have, it must be somewhere over here. The standing right just below us must be somewhere on the right hand side here. I think I'm starting to see things. yep, there's the airfield. You can already see a few bomb craters in there. And it seems that there is no enemy aircraft on that airfield yet. It would be slightly uh, silly to spawn on that airfield simply because it's so close to the front line. So I don't expect anybody to, to really spawn in there. Um, just a way of distinguishing AI planes from, uh, from player airplanes. Um, if at this distance you don't see a plane, then it's simply not... Um, oh, we've got one guy there. Um, that's German, I think. Yeah, it looks German. But yeah, if, if you don't see a plane at this distance, then it is simply um, unpopulated by by players. And as you can see, there's a couple of planes starting to render in there. Those are AI planes. Uh, I would have long spotted the player plane or uh, by this point if it was. So I think we're going to go for those planes. Uh, they look like IL-2 Sturmovics. And uh, let's just hammer this airfield and hopefully our ground units can in also capture this uh, this area of the map now let's just continue flying a little bit make a different kind of approach we're going to go over the airfield direction of our front lines and then launch ourselves on them see another Stuka there on my uh, one o'clock with another plane I think those are that's a B of one on nine Okay, let's push back the throttle a little bit, extend air brakes, there we go, 
and this is how we do it sirens on and bombs away let's see if that hit oh that was a nice hit yes that was straight on Good stuff. I think those IL-2, IL-2s should be dead. Let's drive this airfield a little bit more. I think I still have one 70 kilo bomb. Um, by the amount of times I actually press the bomb release button, I should still have one left. Let's see if I can do something with that one. Got a bit of company there, but I think those are the two B of 109s and the Stuka, so I'm not too concerned about those. Alright, so let's turn around and go for it again. I don't see any plane there, just those AI planes. So we're just gonna get the one that is out in the open. Set ourselves up here. And bombs away, I hope that hits. Let's check. And that is right on. Okay, so that plane is destroyed as well. At least I would presume that it is. Um, I think they actually spawn in again after some time. Uh, only a certain aircraft seem to be uh, destroyed forever. Other other AI aircraft somehow always reset. It's uh, it's a little bit strange, but uh, then again, this game is an early access, so we'll have to uh, consider that. And we have another plane that's up here with a couple of trucks. There we go. Oops, pull up. There we go. And let's just see any noticeable damage in the back. No. So let's just swing around again. And go for it one more time. Here we go. And. I wonder if I should go for that plane or these trucks. I'm gonna go for the trucks now. I'm not quite sure if they're actually destructible. They sh at least one of them should have been destroyed yet. Oh, and there we can see uh, another Stuka and a B of 109 coming in, also strafing. If that guy has the gun pots, he should be able to do some nice damage there. What surprises me at this point is that AA has not yet opened fire. Sometimes it takes them a little bit to open fire. A little while at least, and I guess that's just you know the crew scrambling, uh, the gun crew scrambling to their guns and stuff. But um, I would have expected them to start firing by now, especially because we have like three or four planes here. So let's go for it again. And I see something burning there. I guess that's the uh, Stuka having destroyed something. Yeah, the Stuka destroyed the plane and yeah I think these are indestructible okay let's just see if we have a new target let's go over there again that's uh, 109 strafing there supply base of the enemy airfield out in the open not the best thing you can do with your fuel tanks and uh, let's just go for this area again I don't see a crater there so I guess this has been reset Uh, that was a bad strafing run. I don't think anything really hit that plane there. And once again, I'm surprised. Where is this AA fire? It's not that I want AA fire, but it is a bit weird that it isn't there. And I think we can close this. We don't need it anymore. There we go. There we have the other Stuka. And let's go once again. Don't see enemy any fighters. That's good. I think let's go back to that one fighter that we bombed earlier. Oop, a bit oversensitive on the rudder there. Ah oh, well we just drew a circle around that fighter. That was that was well done, I guess. Not that it was 
really plan to do so. Let's see. Bring this plane around again. And let's go back to those trucks, maybe. Or oh, what is this? Let's just strafe this. A lot of the strafing, guys, is actually not doing anything. A lot of it is, is just, you know, me telling myself that it does something. That's uh, that's part of the immersion, I guess. And I f Oh, that flat gun is opening fire, so it's going to get hot here any second now. Actually, I think I've been hit. My engine is making some funny noises. Yeah, there's something wrong with my engine here. That's weird, I didn't hear an impact. Let's go. I think there's an AI gun over there. Yes, there is. Let's go for this one. It's not firing on me, so this should be good. Yeah, I've definitely been hit. Yeah, definitely been hit. Yeah, I'm smoking. Damn. Okay, let's go home. I think that's the best thing we can do right now. Just get our over our front lines, and if we crash land, then it's so safe ourselves. Oops, no, 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 there's something behind me. Cockpit got hit as well. Yeah, yep, there's something behind me. I wonder what that is. My gunner is obviously not opening fire because then that's an AI, AI gunner and it's useless. It's a P2 that's behind me. Oh dear. Oh, look at how easy that would be as if for a human gunner, but obviously for an AI gunner that's impossible to hit. Oh, there we go. Oh, his gunner is opening fire on me. Look, I'm landing. Okay, I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Hmm, nice little impact sounds there. Okay, well, I landed there. Now he's straight ahead of me. You know what, guys? We're just gonna try it. We're just gonna try it. <laughs> this is not gonna work. Uh, uh, this is just for the fun. This is not gonna work. Maybe it scares them. Probably not. Oh, well. Safely landed here. Uh, I guess we could say that that airfield is ours. Well, it's not really, but I think I landed far away from the airfield to to get out of my plane here and run towards my own front line. So that is it, guys. I hope you liked this video. I hope you liked a little bit of a ground attack here with the Junkers 87D3. And as always, have a great day, good hunting, and see you in the sky.